Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Manton IV here. I want to say happy 4th of July and uh, welcome to all of you that are coming on. The Lord bless you, make his face to shine upon you and give you his own future and expected plan of action for your destination. I have here on a, uh, this tie that I am wearing here and it's got the Lord's hand holding in his hand the world. I thought that very appropriate for our time that we're living in right now. Again, welcome everybody that's coming on. I heard this, uh, this word and I want to give a, a really different, in the world of so much pontification and, you know, revelators and deep thinkers and uh, prophets and apostles and pastors and even people that are in the ethereal realm of things uh, in the world's cosmos, you know, that are all speaking, voices speaking, uh, I want to say something that's really simply profound. And I heard this word so clear, like the last two days, I've been wanting to come and deliver this. It's the most simple statement, but the most profound. And here's the title of my message today. Three words. Three. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Think about that. I want to say thank you, Father, for, Father God, for our life. I want to say thank you, Lord, for our good health. I want to say thank you, Lord, for wealth and riches and treasures that you're giving to us. I want to say thank you, Lord, for uh, 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 blessing us beyond our wildest imagination. I want to thank you, Lord, for the call of God that's upon our lives. I want to thank you, Lord, for the great privilege that uh, we have to serve you. I want to thank you, Lord, for the abundant grace that you have bestowed upon us for uh, this day and hour that we're living in. I want to thank you for your absolute perfect plan of action that's coming forth, that no thing in this world can stop you from doing. The Almighty God has the plan for us, and what He has ordained nobody can disavow or nullify. What he has put forth to make even America a nation built on a Christian foundation and principle of having a free place to rule and reign. Now, we know there were things that happened that were bad, but such is the way of man. And, um, you know, things that are going on these days, such is the way of uh, evil men that are filthy in their ways. But Really, uh, if you look at the foundation of America, there was uh, a, a painting in uh, St. Paul's Cathedral in New York City downtown across from City Hall uh, near Broadway down there. A great old cathedral that, uh, that um, there was a painting called The Glory. Somebody painted The Glory and all the people under it, and the glory cloud. Well, that very glory cloud of the Holy Spirit uh, came to that place back in those days. In 1857, in New York City, there was a revival called the Hudson Street Revival. And on Hudson Street down there, near the Fulton Fish Market, you know, if you're over by the water there, when I went out on that boat uh, the 4th of July last year, uh, the... the uh, when we saw the fireworks in the New York City Harbor, it was really great. And I tell you, all the boats and all the people were as great to see as the fireworks. The fireworks, to me, became a non-issue. When they started going off, I was like, ah, I was already bored. And it took like an hour on that boat we were on to, to go slow, 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 because of all the traffic in the water, to dock. It took so long to get back to the dock. I thought I was going to, you know, lose my patience there. And finally, then we went to Chinatown, got there about midnight or 11 o'clock, whatever it was, and met my old friends down there in Chinatown. They remembered me from years ago, and 
uh, took a video together and they were so happy to see me. The same guys that work there, it's a family owned business, the greatest Chinese food in the world. Ooh, in that little place down there, nobody can match uh, the way they make Chinese food. Oh my, it's beyond, beyond, uh, beyond good. And uh, near there, there was a place called Hudson Street. Hudson Street and uh, near the Fulton Street Market. And 10,000 people and more used to gather for prayer at noontime every day. People were praying. This was the foundation that America was built on. Now, Charles Finney had his revivals through the, you know, the great Charles G. Finney, the revivalist, had his revival, who was a lawyer, and then got, had an appearance of the Lord to him, and then he decided to leave the world stuff and, uh, uh, you know, business and all that and go preach the gospel and signs and wonders and miracles. You know, he'd walk into a place and people would get convicted and start falling on the floor, wanting to crying out to be saved because he carried so much of heaven's glory. That happened in the New York uh, region, you know, from those states around there, I guess, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, then up into New England, all of that area up there in that east coast of America, the northeast of the coast of America. And those states and those kind of, move of God, moves of God were happening. Now, I want to ask the question, where is the move of God today? If I see someone, and I want to thank God for his anointing. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Your power and your presence is the most paramount thing that we could ever have or want to have or hope to be, become would, would be to be your great, humble, holy dedicated and faithful servant. And I, when I see someone who's anointed, I want to thank God for that anointing. I, I marvel at that because I know it cost them something to get it. You know, people say, oh, is it something free? What's free? What's free? Salvation for us cost Jesus' life. The horrible crucifixion, which they say is the most painful kind of way to die uh, of any kind of death. And he went through that for us. And then the price we pay as his servants to walk with him, you know, uh, it's not free, it's not cheap. But, you know, of course, we print books to bless people. You know, sometimes people, a lot of people buy my books and you, I have one of them here you can get. Make sure you get this, The Benefits of Excellence. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal book. And uh, that with this DVD on the power to create wealth, you can get for a love gift of $25 or more. Uh, and just get in touch with us, write a comment on the screen. It's that simple if you want to do on the, you can put a comment that you'd want it, put your phone number, we can get in touch with you. Uh, that's fine. But uh, you can also order it on the website. Uh, a lot of people sewing like $50, $100, $200, something like that as a seed into our missions work. And I'm sending this to them as my love gift. You know, some have sewn much more than that. And I'm sending this as my love gift. And as I have, Books that come out I want to give. So the point is people buy them. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. So I like to give this as a, um, as a you know, appreciation gift to someone who is, uh, you know, connecting with this ministry. So this can also be yours in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for giving us the ability to write books. I'm writing so many others. I have one about focus, one about decisions, one about... Uh, if I start the, t the titles, oh, awesome titles. I'm not going to say the titles now. As they come out, you'll be seeing them one after the other, and you'll be able to get them. I also want to make them as ebooks and online. I want to thank God for that, Father. We want to thank you for your grace and your goodness. So we also want to th we want to thank you for your 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 enabling power, your your brilliant your brilliance that you give to people to. Um, Help in promoting your work and advancing your kingdom around the world. The world is in your hands. Yes, you see? You know, the Bible says clearly, hey, let me give you scripture. The Bible says clearly the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and all they that dwell therein are his. I was trying to, th trying to think if I had an American flag kind of tie, you know, or some kind of handkerchief or something, and I... I, I saw a few combos of colors of things, but I like this better. The world is in his hands. Let's never forget that. America is in his hands. Father, we want to say that uh, 
We, we know, we're aware that the enemy is working behind the scenes and in, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes and everywhere in between to try to mess America up. But we're praying that on our watch, America will stand. And uh, we pray for people in the government. I don't want to get too much into that right now, but we want to thank you also, Lord, for a president who loves you and believes in you. We want to thank you, Lord, for infiltrating the government with Holy Ghost-filled believers. I, I believe for that. I want to go to the next point. I want, to, I want to thank God for wealth and treasure and riches that he wants to give us to provide for us, to serve him well, and to advance his kingdom all around the world. You know, when you have money and you have uh, proceeds and resources to, to work with, you know, you, you, you get a kind of a, an amazing opportunity to, to work unhindered, you know? You, whatever you want to do, it can be done. Whatever you want to buy, you can buy. Whatever you want to, uh, uh, to function in and as, you can do it because you have the resources. And I know so many people are struggling with this area. I, I want to say from Scripture, the Lord wants you to be rich. I want to say also from Scripture that the Lord wants all people to be prophetic. Moses had to say, oh, I wish all God's people would be prophets. Yeah, because he knew the power of prophesying. You know, Amos 3, 7 says, surely the Lord God will do nothing except the, unless he first reveal his secret to his servants, the prophets. And the lion has roared in the city who won't fear the voice of the power of the lion. Of course, the lion roars and things happen. Everybody notices. This is like it. There's an, an analogy there to prophecy. The power of prophecy speaks. And let me tell you what prophecy is. Prophecy is when God decides to speak something creative that's from his own mind and his own imagination about something he wants to do. And he said he'll do nothing unless he first reveal it and it is first then spoken. Now, people can also see, but a seer is not always a prophet, but a prophet is always a seer because a prophet is one that's seeing and then declaring that the seer can see and then do pray, see things in secret, uh, advise, be a prophetic advisor, a prophetic help. But they may not be the one with the microphone and the amplification or the media to trumpet it out to the world. That's a different kind of grace. And that comes with the office of the prophet. So I uh, want to tell you today that the power of God's voice is powerful. I want to thank you, Lord, for that. I remember Psalm 29 says, the voice of the Lord is as many waters. It's powerful. It's indestructible. It's invincible, you know? And, and the voice of God is what created uh, everything. Even Adam was walking in the garden with God and the Lord's voice had a, a physical expression of itself to Adam. Imagine that. In the cool of the day, like maybe the afternoon hours or toward the evening or early in the morning, in the cool of the day, whenever that was, there was a, an expression of the voice of God that Adam was able to communicate directly. Now, when, he, when Eve tricked him and the devil tricked Eve and Eve tricked him and they all got messed up together, intertwined together in that and fell, that kind of, that thing was cut off. But God brought it back together again when he sent the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to bring us back to him. And I want to thank God for salvation. I want to thank God for his love, his power. Today's message is entitled, very profoundly, Thank You, Lord. I may pick this up again, but for sure... I don't want the evening to come today before I thank God for what it is he's doing. And the Lord is just doing so many things in our day. Some will say hallelujah and some will say thank you, Lord. God is ready to pour out his spirit upon us 
Um, we've been having a discourse, and I've been thinking again about revival. What brings revival? What brings the spirit of revival? What brings the, uh, the, uh, you know, the power of the Holy Ghost to move? Really, when God finds a vessel in a person that he feels he can trust and he wants to manifest his presence through, that's how it comes, in part one. And then uh, ready audience is there to receive. That's part two. So we can plan our events and all that. But when God shows up, it's usually a sovereign thing. And I want to thank the Lord. I believe that God is getting people ready for a move of his spirit. I believe that God's getting people ready for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost from heaven that we are about to see something great happen again, like the days of Charles Finney, like the days of Spurgeon, pontificating revelations that he received, like the days of Amy Simple McPherson and Catherine Coleman, like the days of the Voice of Healing, when there were tent meetings all over America where people were being healed, signs and wonders and miracles. You know, if you don't ever see a miracle, like in a few years' time, you're in a dead situation. You're in a dead zone. You should be, number one, praying for people. I want to thank God for his healing power. Thank you, Lord, for your healing, your miracle-working power. You know, if you've never seen a miracle of healing, like heard someone really was healed of something, nobody prayed for their healing. If you haven't seen a great deliverance where somebody changed, they were possessed by devils or something was going on, uh, demonically over them, and then they're just free and changed, then where is the Holy Spirit really, really moving? You know, where? And there's a lot of people that claim to have the Christian experience, the salvation experience, and they, they have not seen a miracle. I want to thank you, Lord, for your miracle work and power. I want to thank you, Lord, again for your prophetic voice. I want to thank you for true apostles, true prophets, true evangelists, true pastors, true teachers, true uh, ministry workers, people that are creative. I want to thank you, Lord, for media. I want to thank you, Lord, for uh, the, the ways of doing the greatest things through media and technology to help us reach the world with your voice and your power. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you, Lord, for your grace and your wisdom. I want to thank you, Lord, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that makes us brilliant, that makes the light come on in our imagination and in our thinking, and we can know the way forward, what to do in every situation. You know, wisdom is knowing the difference between this and that. Wisdom is knowing how to apply the knowledge that you receive. Understanding, the gift of understanding is also a very powerful uh, gift. I want to thank you, Lord, for understanding. When you understand something, you, you understand. You know about a situation through and through. And when it comes like supernaturally like that, oh my God, how powerful that is. Knowledge is powerful. A man worth half a billion dollars was, was approximately, was, was uh, talking to a man of God, a dear mentor and, and dear friend for many years of mine. And by the way, uh, this apostle, great man of God, just spoke a great word over me and, and an endorsement and a, a love letter and a, you know, on his broadcast. I've never seen that happen with anybody. He just stopped the broadcast and just began to talk to me. And uh, we, have that, we have that for people to see. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's out of this world. It's unique. I've never seen it happen like that before uh, with him. And it's great. But he was talking to this very wealthy businessman. He said, what's the, what's the biggest key, the most important thing that you think uh, is needed? And the man, businessman, instantly answered without, without a blink, information. To have information. You know, uh, Walton, Wal Walton, Sam Walton of Walmart. You know the Walmart. Walmart is, you know, all of his descendants, that uh, his children that inherited his money, uh, when he died, they got billions of dollars each, and then their business kept going, and their five, his living children are five of the wealthiest, among the wealthiest people in the world from one organization, the Walmart Company. 
Now, what Sam Walton did is he had information. He found out what the margin was of what the uh, cost factor was, the cost factor to their sale price, he found out. And then he cut it down to take less of a margin so he'd run everybody into his stores. Brilliant. And was it a success? Ha, oh, beyond, beyond. And they multiplied billions of, of dollars. I mean, hundreds of billions to it. Could it be to half, I mean, billions and billions and billions. Could it go to half a trillion, you know? One, one idea, and everybody shops there, the rich and the poor alike, and the money flows. I was, I was looking online, thank you, Lord, for this kind of entrepreneurial grace and ideas that you're going to give your people in this season and hour to begin to uh, 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 get, create wealth and generate wealth for the advancing of your kingdom. I'm praying for you as a business person. I'm praying and declaring over your life that Almighty God will just give you such uh, ingenious ideas. You're, you're a genius in innate potential, but I want to pray and prophesy and thank God that he's making you a genius in reality now. You in ministry, God will give you the greatest innovative ways to reach the world with your ministry. You in business, God will give you the most innovative and brilliant ways to be successful and make a lot of coffers of wealth, treasures of wealth and riches, so you can give to the gospel, so that you can also live well, so that you can help other people and you can amplify our voice. Those business people connected with me. You know, I, I got to keep alluding to this every once in a while. I should really say it every single day. And oftentimes I do, but I want to say it again now. God has given me an anointing, put an anointing on my life to pray for business people. And I don't know what it is that anybody that connects with me, their, their organization expands, their money grows, their income expands and elevates, goes up higher. It just happens. People get blessed with miracles of advancement, increase, promotion, elevation, and new wealth, new money, new treasure. It's happened all around the world. Even young people that have worked with us in our ministry, old and young alike, they've become rich. It's a sovereign anointing, I'm telling you. And I value it and treasure it so much, Lord. I'll never downplay it because of religious devils, because of people that don't understand it. I'll never mock it or belittle it. Never in my life. I thank you, Lord, for this grace. Because I've seen it work. And I've heard God speak about it. And he's, he's you know what? If the Lord is excited about something, you better be excited about it, too. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to disappoint him. Hello. Knock, knock, knock. Wow. And uh, there are people that God is just going to bring into the business arena. And you, even people in ministry that God's going to make very savvy in understanding and in wisdom to create and produce new things that haven't uh, been unlocked before. And I believe many of those listening, you know, you're the kind of people that need to receive this in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the next season where you're going to set up ways for us to reach the world. We've, we've preached to millions, but now um, the day is coming when we're going to be regularly doing it through all types of media. You've been speaking to me about that. Thank you for the divine call that you want us to be in the media. You want us to be in television, broadcasting your word. That's what I mean, in the media. To be in the media, using media to broadcast your word to the world. We're going to have a radio station. We're going to have an online radio thing. We're going to have our application where people can get and download all over the world and all the continents of the world. The Lord's been speaking about me mentoring many, many people that I would perhaps never even meet in other continents, in other countries, in other nations around the world, 
And how is this going to happen? It's going to happen online. So I'm thanking you in advance for that. Thank you, Lord, again for the great freedom that you gave us in America. Let it not be lost. We thank you for the 2020 election. I thank you in advance. Thank you, Lord. That's the title of today's message. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the victory that the Christian voice is going to continue in the White House. And uh, it's going to keep going and going and going and going. Thank you, Lord, that you're breaking up every evil force in the political arena that is trying to cause a diversion in America toward, you know, this socialism, communism and stupid stuff and demonic liberal ideologies and isms and schisms and actions that are just horrific. Thank you, Lord, for the pro-life movement that you've begun to uh, uh, let people come to their senses about that. Some people in government are even doing new legal law, law things to, uh, to eradicate this slaughtering of innocent children. Thank you, Lord, for that. Let it continue. We know, listen, we know the judgment is coming upon the world, but not upon us. We're still here. And this is a really a great reason, plus from Scripture, that I absolutely emphatically believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. If we're going up, we're going up before all that mess. Uh, I just hope it doesn't intertwine too much uh, in our day because it seems like the forces of evil are doing so much. I want to thank you, Lord, for keeping them back that we can have a good, uh, you know, what if you lived in the 19th, a good life, a peaceable life and all that. What if you lived in the 1940s and 50s? I mean, they had their evils, but they never had the stuff that's going on now, you know, or what seems to be like in, in looming coming, you know, and all that. So we're going to have to have extra grace to live in the days we're living in and live out our life in, in peace and security and also in, in power to... Bring forth the word of the Lord to the ends of the earth. I thank you, Lord, for friends that truly love us. I thank you, people that we truly love. I thank you, Lord, for families and... Uh, boy, if I had a clip, I could make that like that. So it's like the whole thing in there. There we go. I'll just hold it like that. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, for people that have... Uh, people that love them and people that... Uh, want to help, want to work with them. Thank you, Lord, for great relationships. I'm writing a book about relationships. It's very, very awesome. Uh, the layout of the content and the cover has been done in a draft, a sample, and I have to final edit it and get it ready for uh, print and reproduction. And uh, the Lord is going to help me uh, finish that along with many other books that are just really, really, really life-altering and life-advancing and life-enhancing. You know, one thing, I want to thank you, Lord, for revelation. I want to thank you, Lord, for intellect and intelligence because it's just so boring to not get challenged by messages and be in church or in a conference or listening and not getting stretched to another level. I thank you, Lord, for true apostles, true prophets, true teachers. You know, a pastor is also a teacher and evangelist that have their function in the church and outside the church, both. An evangelist also comes to stir up the church. It's an office also in the church, to the church, as well as to the lost, you know, to stir up the people to become uh, evangelical and evangelistic, evangelistic, and to be evangelizing, you know, and to bring the power of also healings and miracles. Those also flow in the office of the evangelist very powerfully, and it's an awesome, awesome supernatural grace and thing. I think evangelists have been very much forgotten about. There came a time when everybody wanted to be called apostle. No longer good enough for people to be called a pastor. Some people aren't even that good as a pastor, and I don't know why they need the title apostle. Uh, I have a friend, uh, another mentor, a real, real serious, a real true apostle, though he doesn't call himself one. He says, he says if he was walking down the alley and saw people laying there, and he tripped over a couple of them. You wonder if they'd also be called apostles. Apostles, he said. That's a joke. As he said, people that will all want the titles, but where's the fruit, you know? How dare you say you're an apostle? How dare you? What's up with you? And we don't see the fruit of your ministry. We don't see that you've challenged anybody, brought anybody anywhere, 
performed in great functionality over nations and cities and regions and things. And it's like nothing really much has come through you and now you need this title. Why don't you just call yourself by your name? Or why don't you call yourself by uh, 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 pastor or evangelist? Humble yourself a bit. Don't look for titles. I'm saying that to somebody. I, I, there was a woman that I met years ago. She was in some meetings we were, and we had some mutual friends in different conferences and stuff. And, and she came online years later, and she's saying she's chief apostle. So I wrote her, I said, dear, Jesus is the chief apostle, but he doesn't even really r- run around call, you know, calling himself that. Not that he's running around, he's at the right hand of the Father, you know what I mean? But he doesn't have to call himself, I am the chief apostle of the church. <laughs> How about getting into this? Help me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this message. Yeah. And uh, he's like, uh, you know, not r- trying to call himself all of that, you know? Here's this person who called himself chief apostle, and they were trying to explain to me, well, I work with other apostles, so like, and I'm kind of over them, so like that makes like her, a, a lady, a chief apostle. And I thought, no, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. I mean, same concept. But I thought, you know what? Even apostles are stretch when we can't see the fruit of what you've already done. Let the fruit of your life and your work and your anointing speak for itself, Okay. And then if somebody wants to call you by an office title, fine, fine. But you don't have to take it upon yourself to take all that. I met a, I was in a television studio in Newark, New Jersey. I was doing a television program. And the Lord, uh, uh, there was a particular woman of God there that was ministering. And she was a single mother in Newark, New Jersey. And she gave me her card. And on the card it said, Apostle, Prophet, Evangelist, Pastor, Teacher, Reverend, Doctor. Two whole lines, long lines. And then her name under that. So I took the card and I flipped it back and held it to her. And I said, dear, which one is it? Can you tell me which office you really flow in? What do you think is your highest grace? I was trying to help her, you know. And she was like, well, like this and that, all of them. She couldn't, couldn't couldn't, couldn't quite get my point. I just left it at that. But I thought, you know... Why don't you work in one office? I believe this. An apostle is somebody who's a builder and a trailblazer, okay? And I don't believe you come the, in the first, um, you know, early season of your ministry and all of a sudden you're an apostle, I think it's something that you can grow into through another office. This has been my observation. You know, someone's a teacher. They're a really great teacher. They taught so many people. It becomes apostolic because now they become a father in it. They become a patriarch and a mentor to many people. You understand? And uh, uh, a prophet can also become apostolic because you've just, you're in the governmental level. You blaze so many things open. You, you could end up, in fact, becoming uh, in the, in the uh, apostolic function in that. A pastor, same thing. Many branches, many churches, many sons and daughters, m- many fruits, many congregations, many things. And maybe you're really an apostle. Okay, so let's not be quick to look for the titles. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to humble ourselves and just use our name. My name is Thomas, and my Lord is the one who's holding the world in his hand on my tie here. And he's the one, and this is my initials here, this is my logo as well, for my name, from my clothing line, TM. Looks like the scales of justice, right? I thought, I just had a vision of it. I said, a graphic artist would do that. That's my name, Thomas Manton, that's my name, okay? I didn't put PTM for Reverend Doctor. It would be too big, okay? So uh, I, I have the, the, the Doctorate of Divinity, you know? And on the, on the educational side, I'm not a medical doctor. People say, if you're a doctor, are you a medical doctor? What kind of medicine do you practice? I said, no, I'm in the educational side of it. And that's fine. And people do call me, doc- fine, 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 fine. But let the functionality of our anointing and what God is really doing through us <coughs> speak to the world on behalf of him and also produce results. Do you know prophetic power? I want to thank you, Lord, for that. Reality, reality check, you know, on a level path. Lord, lead us on a level path. 
Let us be level with what we're achieving and doing. And let us, let, let, if we're going to be known for anything, let us be known for that good, the thing that you've actually done through us. We take no credit for it. Lord, I thank you. We give you all the glory. My God, I feel the anointing here. Whew! Received a touch of heaven. Father, lift your hands right now. Let's thank the Lord today on this July 4th. We should be celebrating, thanking God for a lot of things, for our country, America, for victory, for freedom, and all of that, of course, for the people that have fought for us and, and all of that on this Independence Day but, and the founding of our great country, America, in 1776 by the founding fathers who were, were really, uh, you know, a lot of them were Christians full of the Holy Ghost, okay? So thank God for America. Thank you for all that. But I want to thank you, Lord, for the fruit of our life being productive to change the world that we live in. I want to thank you, Lord, that we are world shakers and history makers because of what you're doing through us. I want to thank you, Lord. And that's the title of my message today. Thank you, Lord. It's three words. Imagine. Imagine that. And by the way, talking about imagination, the biggest nation in the world is imagination, not India, China, America, Australia, those continents, but even the continent of Australia. But the biggest nation in the world is imagination. It's right in here, what God's given you to use to think. I want to thank you, Lord, for your brilliance in us. I want to thank you, Lord, for your grace. I want to thank you, Lord, for your kindness to us. I want to thank you, Lord, for your uh, uh, enablement, empowerment to us and through us. And I want to thank you, Lord, that we give you all the credit and all the glory and all the honor, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. And we take no credit for anything you've done, but we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty, all the dominion, all the might, and all the fame and fury and glory and fabulous spectacular praise because of how good you are to us. I want to thank you, Lord, for riches and wealth coming to us. I want to thank you, Lord, for healing and health coming to us. I want to thank you, Lord, that you're satisfying us with long life according to Psalm 91, 16, that you said, uh, with long life I'll satisfy you because your mind is stayed upon, upon me. I want to thank you, Lord, for Psalm 91, 1. It says, we, we are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High and abiding under the shadow of the Almighty and no evil. I want to thank you, Lord, that no evil can touch us. I want to thank you, Lord, for, for protection for every, uh, uh, from every evil in this world. No, nothing can take us unawares or by surprise. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. No adversity or harm or danger can come to us in any way. I want to thank you, Lord, for the power of forgiveness, your forgiveness to us. I want to thank you, Lord, for the power of repentance, that we, um, you know, see things as they really are, and we f they get this conviction, and we feel that we need to pray. And I want to thank you, Lord, that your people and your leaders and people that are walking with you are going to begin to really, really come clean with you in this season, fear you again, and more than before, and really get their souls cleansed and things fixed in their life, that they're building a great foundation which you can then take them from here and on and upward in this next season, in Jesus' name. It's great to be alive on the 4th of July. I'm going to see this fireworks celebration. I don't know what it means, but I guess it's good to get out and walk around if nothing else and take a walk out where all the people are and see what's going on in this uh, down by the harbor and all that. But, you know, praise the Lord. So uh, take time thanking God. God knows what you have need of. The Lord spoke to me. I was just weeping in his presence, you know, just the, a couple of days ago. Sometime, I can't remember when. It was early in the morning, I think. And the Lord spoke to me immediately before I asked him anything. I didn't ask him anything. I was just praising him and thanking him. And he said, son, I know what you need, and I am working behind the scenes. I am working on this for you. I am doing it. I am doing it. I am doing it. I am doing it. And I was like, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, for blessing your people. I want to thank you, Lord, for giving people everything that they need and want to live in this world. 
everything that you've ordained for their cause and mission and life assignment that you're going to give them now the provisions that they need to be the head and not the tail above only and not beneath for all of the great things that you've ordained will now begin to come forth and come to pass the next season is here I tell you prophetically again the benefits of excellence is available and this DVD when you so seed into the ministry on thomasmanton.com. And I know our friends can put my other information on there. Our M-Pesa line for Kenya, our uh, Cash App and PayPal and all of that. Many easy ways to sow to help with us with our missions work. And we thank you for that. And uh, I, I want to see you raised up. I'm thanking God that God's given you the breakthrough. Many people have had all kinds of setbacks and issues. It seemed like there's been great attack against great people. Now, not that this is anything new. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, I mean, uh, of course, but I, I really see a lot of people that have been hit and sidelined, hurt. They were like really flourishing and flowing and some things came to just hit them and divert them and get them off uh, the path a little bit or to become, to get them to, to feel wounded or uh, you know, just off the path that they were on in great power. And I want to say it's a time of consecration. Anybody that's had any kind of attacks like that, you need to get up. You need to dust yourself off. You need to get back in the presence of God. You need to begin to really, really uh, seek God, worship Him, thank Him, get reconnected. You know what I mean? In the glory, a, a, a tangibly manifested glory from heaven. And then God's going to begin to reshape you and refine you and make you even better than you were before in the heyday that you had, uh, what you'd call a great season, and make you produ productive and fruitful and faithful and powerful to be a world shaker and a history maker. You are not done. You are not done. I want to prophesy, you are not done. The, the setback came, but the comeback is coming now. And what you want and want to see and want to experience and have, the Lord himself has it, has, it, has it in his hand for you. But you need to jump back into his hand. If you jumped out for any reason, jump back. If you got lost or disillusioned or hurt and embittered by situations or betrayals or lies or setbacks, or you know, these things come to good people. You got to get back in that palm of the hand of the Lord. Not that you were ever out of it, but you got to get back into that place of his real tangible glory moving through you in a daily experience. That epiphany kind of thing, what we call an epiphany, an appearing, an awakening, it's coming again, I prophesy, that it's coming again. A, a, a move of heaven upon you that you've not seen before or of late. It's coming again. Those sovereign visitations when the Lord became in such power upon you. It's coming again, my friend. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. For that outpouring is coming by the Spirit of the Lord. And Father, I just thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your grace and your power and your goodness and your might and your majesty and dominion in and through our lives that what we have longed for, you're longing for. And I thank you, Lord, for, for good things. I thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and has no sorrow. I thank you, Lord, for we are the head and not the tail. I thank you, Lord, for the wealth of the wicked, according to uh, Psalm uh, Proverbs 10.22 and Proverbs 13.22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and has no sorrow, and the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous, for us. And we thank you, Lord, also in Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, that treasures and hidden treasures and resources are coming to us for our benefit and our good and for the advancing of your kingdom around the world. Thank you, Lord, that it's coming into our hands now in Jesus' name. I claim it for you. If you're ailed in any way or ill or infirmed, I break that sickness and disease off of you. And I curse every virus, bacteria, sickness and disease, and I command that healing fire from heaven comes upon you and you're healed in Jesus' name. If the devil's been troubling you, I pray for total deliverance from, uh, for your life. 
If you've been hurt in your heart, I pray for it. The balm of Gilead, the poor. Thank you, Lord, for it. I declare it in Jesus' name that God's going to begin to heal you and raise you up. You are not done. You're getting set up for the comeback. And the next season is the best thing that's ever going to be seen that you've ever seen in your life. And I believe the Lord is adding to you financially. Great, great, great riches. Great, great, great honor. Great, great, great favor, opportunities, friends, open doors, new networks, all kinds of things for your success. High-level relationships, favor with great people that you'll get more done in a day than you could have gotten done in a year. That day is coming now. So receive that from the Lord. I'm going to continue in this, but I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. Remember to write me and order your copy of The Benefits of Excellence, my great book, and this great teaching on the power to create wealth on DVD when your love gift is great to the ministry. I'll be glad to send that to you as my gift. And you can do that on thomasmanton.com. All right? And the other information will be on the screen. I'm praying for God's favor upon you today. And Lord, we thank you for our celebration today of this great nation here on our Independence Day. And I thank you, Lord, for your touch, us being right with you, moving with you, flowing with you. What a privilege that you called us. Thank you for your call. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to make us brilliant. Thank you, Lord, for your riches and wealth in our hands, in our lives, in our accounts, to be able to do everything we want to do. Thank you, Lord, for healing and health in our body. Thank you for long life. Thank you for peace of mind. Thank you for deliverance from any type of oppression, depression, fear, anxiety, stress, sadness, woundedness, all of those things that attack people. It's gone in Jesus' name. Be delivered in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for your power being poured out on this generation. We are going to see the greatest revival, reformation, and even revolution that's coming now through the body of Christ to take the world from the devil and his ugly friends and win as many millions of people as we can to the Lord for the glory of the kingdom of God and for the Lord himself. I love you. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'll pick this up later. Have a great day. I know you're encouraged by this. Share this with your friends. I love you. And from the one that has the world in his hand, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is our King and our God. And I thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your call. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your outpouring. Thank you, Lord, for making us the head and not the tail. Thank you, Lord, for your protection over us from every evil in this world. And we're moving in your power to change and shake and reform even nations of the world in Jesus name in our day thank you Lord thank you Lord for this so I'm so grateful so enamored with your call and anointing and the fact that you've chosen us to work with you and for you and with you and through and you in and through us to change this world what a privilege and we want to hear at the end of it all well done my good and faithful servant come on let's enjoy the glory and the pleasures of God forevermore. We're going to hear it. We're going to hear it. We're going to hear it. Bring as many people as you can with you. If you've not received Jesus as your Savior, the one who holds the world in his hands, I say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior, your gift of salvation. I receive. Forgive me from all wrong and sin. Come into my life. I receive your gift of salvation. Holy Spirit, I receive you. The devil is no longer my boss or my Lord or master. No, you, Lord Jesus, are my King and my God and my Savior and my Lord and my boss, my, my, my Father, Father God, you're my Father. And I thank you, Lord, that I am blessed in this world and you're going to begin to do many, many things through, in and through my life. And show me yourself how real you are, how powerful you are. I receive you, Lord, into my life. If you've gotten a, a, a little bit d d d distracted or diverted of the right way, uh, let God bring you back strong in your lane, in your call, on your highway, in your calling, in Jesus' name. I, I declare the fire of heaven 
come upon you, that personal visitation from the Holy Spirit, come upon you to show you the way, to empower you, to raise you up, and to make you the head and not the tail, and to have you as a conqueror and a warrior and a victor in all things, and a great, great, great vessel and servant of the Lord, Jesus Christ, for his glory, in Jesus' name. I am Thomas Manton IV, and I will talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you much. Have a great day.